now back to the show. This is The Law Show on CL 650. Help, I need somebody. Help, not just anybody. Help, you know I need someone. Well, that one got our guests smiling on the program this morning. It's the Law Show here on CIL 650, and two very capable helpers from Murphy Batista are with us in studio this morning. Joe Murphy, QC, is a lawyer and founding partner of the firm. John Cameron is a lawyer, and he's the newest member of the firm, having uh, been in the office for a number of years, but officially and formally a member of the team only for just a few short weeks. And we're talking about insurance on the program this morning, and uh, Joe has already identified the fact that at Murphy Batista, the biggest volume of business in personal injury law comes from people who are injured in car accidents. Joe, uh, when people come to see you, typically what's happened uh, uh, in BC? Can we talk about no fault too? Because you were talking earlier, John, about even if you're partly at fault, you might have to sue your husband or yes. something. We in British Columbia have something called no fault insurance, Joe. You and I have talked about this in the past. I think most British Columbia drivers are really wrong when they think they know what no fault insurance means. What no-fault is, Sterling, and it's called, uh, more commonly called no-fault benefits or Part 7 benefits, is this. The basic ICBC policy that we have on all our cars, and you actually get coverage through your driver's license, says that if you or a member of your family, a member of your household, or someone in your car gets hurt in a car accident, ICBC will make payments for medical bills, for rehab expenses, for wage loss benefits, someone's killed for funeral benefits. Now, like any other insurance policy, there's limitations, there's uh, limits on the amounts, some things are excluded, Right. but it's paid, uh, they're called no-fault benefits because they're paid regardless of whose fault the accident is. Okay. So that's a small part of the basic ICBC uh, uh, coverage that we essentially all have. It's almost impossible to find someone in BC that isn't covered by this Part 7 or no-fault coverage. And yet there are some drivers, John, who think that no-fault insurance means that no matter what happens in an accident, I'm not at fault. I've got no-fault insurance. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly the opposite of that. Like you, you certainly can still be at fault. And fault is still a crucial element of people getting compensation. And people need to realize, and sometimes there's some misunderstanding about that. People occasionally will inquire in my office about the fact they've been injured in a car accident and they want to know what they can get in terms of compensation for their pain and suffering. Sure. But then they tell me that, I said, how did it happen? I said, well, I lost control and I crashed into a tree. And I'm like, well, you can't sue yourself, so there's not going to be any compensation. But in that circumstance, what you could do and you, and you should do is still access no-fault benefits, which will provide some somewhat limited, but some benefits for things such as medical treatment, right, medication, okay. care. Okay, so it is, there's still, and, and Joe, we've had this in BC for what, 20, 30 or more years since ICBC came along. ICBC, and there are, yeah. There are still people who don't get no fault. They think it's a, it's a blanket absolution for being the worst possible driver in Canada. Yes, and, and we've had no fault coverage and we've had ICBC since 1972. Sure. So a long, long time. Right. Now, you were talking about family members. And here's a little trick that a lot of family members like to do. Um, somebody, somebody just graduated from high school or university, and they're getting their first car. So let's put it in mom's name. Oh, I know. Better still, let's put it in grandma's name. She's 83. Her insurance is going to be absolutely peanuts. Twice what mom would have got charged and 18 times what the kid who's buying the car is going to get charged. So let's put it in grandma's name. Now, how smart a tactic is that? They're going to save some dough, especially the 19-year-old Joe, but where does that one fall through the cracks? Well, Sterling, everything's fine unless there's an accident and a claim. And if there's a claim, ICBC is going to look at it and say, well, realistically, who was driving this car and who was the principal driver of the car? And if you get a sports car convertible and you say grandma is the principal driver, there's an automatic suspicion. Listen, this doesn't make sense. Right, right. And there was a case in Vancouver of a mother who owned a five-liter Mustang with a manual transmission who's, uh, with that car driven by the son, involved in an accident. Okay. And ICBC said, well, he drove the car all the time, so we're not going to pay. You misrepresented it. 
And it went to trial, and the woman... And, and the mom, of course, says, no, 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 I drive it yep. most of the time, and he just uses it occasionally. When, when I ask him to run an errand, and on the stand, she was asked by the ICBC lawyer, Madam, what's the shift pattern of the transmission in your car? And she, of course, had no idea right, right. what he was talking about. Right, right. Much less what the shift pattern was, because in reality, she never drove the car. Right. And that, um, the coverage was lost. So what ICBC does in a case like that if someone's injured is they pay out the person injured and then they turn around and say to the driver and the owner, you owe us 150000 or $200,000. Oh, so it really backfires. You can't renew your license until you pay us or make arrangements. You can't buy auto insurance unless you pay us or make arrangements. And it's a terrible situation all for the purpose initially of trying to save a few dollars. Save maybe a couple of hundred bucks on annual. For a 19-year-old, yeah. probably if, between 19-year-old and a grandma, there's probably more than a couple of hundred dollars yes. a year in premiums. And if the 19-year-old's got a bad record, it, the, the difference is substantial, but maybe that means they shouldn't be driving. Mm -hmm. And, and John, yes. it's in law, it's all about the owner of the vehicle. You and I were talking just over a coffee before we started the show today about that that's the, the, the guy who rode his motorcycle through <laughs> Surrey Central Plaza there and, and really ripped the place up and up and down the escalators and something right out of Mall Cop or something <laughs> like that. Well, they didn't ever catch the guy but on, on their surveillance video cameras, they got the plate number of the motorcycle. Yes. Turns out the motorcycle owner was not the driver that ripped through the shopping center, but the motorcycle owner got a huge honking fine, didn't he? He did, and actually the, it's the same thing that happens if you think of uh, a red light camera. You know, you lend your car to someone. And it, it's, a, it's a choice made by the legislature, and it makes sense. The idea is that we trust people to own vehicles, and in some ways vehicles are, are fantastic for us to get around, but they can also be very dangerous in the wrong hands. So it puts an onus on the owner of a vehicle to make sure that you're lending your vehicle out, if you are, to responsible people, never to impaired people. Right. You're not letting your kid drive it under age. And, uh, and that's why if, a, if you're involved in an accident in BC, the people, if the driver gets sued and the owner automatically is also sued because the owner is vicariously liable. And the only exception, of course, would be if your car is stolen or right. something. Okay. And that's, that's, why that's an exception. That's, of course, that's an exception. Okay, right. Interesting stuff. So, J Joe, w when it comes to the, the, the owner and, and the, the law of it all, uh, back to the grandmother example. Uh, chances are that insurance policy didn't even include uh, coverage for uh, persons 25 years of age and younger. That's a rider that we have to remember. This, you know, a lot of boomers listen to this radio station, and we have nieces and nephews and grandchildren and sons and daughters uh, uh, that we lend our cars. Grandpa, can I borrow your car? Hey, Uncle Sterling, can I borrow your cool car for an afternoon? And if we don't have that particular clause paid for in our insurance policy that says it's okay for someone 25 or under to drive this vehicle and there's a problem there's no insurance for that person is there Joe? there that's a potential risk whenever you don't have the coverage you've got and it's another reason why you should have the five million coverage people think i'm a safe driver i've never had an accident sure why of course. should i buy that right but if your car is ever going to be driven by someone else they have an accident you're responsible with them you're personally responsible so another reason to have the $5 million maximum coverage. A blanket question to both of you. When a person is involved in a car accident, not just a little fender bender where you write the guy's name down and, and, and information is exchanged, there's a little paint scrape here and there, but when there's an accident of some magnitude involving some degree of injury, how soon? Should the parties involved, particularly the people who have sustained injuries, how soon after that should they seek out the help and advice of a lawyer? Sterling, there's a great benefit if they contact a lawyer before they speak to ICBC because then they can find out what they have to be worried about, what they have to be aware of and careful with, and they can decide then whether they want to continue and deal directly with ICBC okay. or whether they want to hire a lawyer to do it for them but at least they're armed with the knowledge of what the lay of the land's like, what the issues are, and what their choices are. If they wait till later, and I've had clients um, approach me years after an accident, it makes it very difficult, including investigating the accident. You know, the, the dust is settled, of course. cars are gone. Right. Surveillance uh, camera. Very, too. very difficult. Right. Okay. So they need the knowledge so that they can make the decision and they get the knowledge. 
by contacting a lawyer early on before they speak to ICBC. But John, typically yes. in, in British Columbia, when we have a, a, an accident, not that we're, not one where we're taken away in an ambulance, and then that's a whole r different movie. But if we're in, even in an accident in which people get scuffed up a little bit, typically we go to ICBC first. Yes. Because they bill themselves as being user friendly. They got a big TV campaign. Come and see us. Come and talk to us. You know, sit down and, and look us in the eye and, and let's get started on helping you out. That's the pitch. So m I, I think people would respond favorably to that uh, ad campaign. And typically, I think we would probably not go, go to the lawyer first. We'd go to ICBC first, wouldn't we? I think that's what most people do. I, I agree with uh, Joe said. I often have people call me and say, listen, can I just talk to you uh, on the phone before I talk to ICBC? I'm going to go tomorrow, let's say. Okay. I have been in an accident. I've heard, uh, I've been referred to you. And I always say, yes, that's it. I'll give you the lay of land. And I can tell them what to expect. And in many cases, if it's straightforward, I'll say to them, you're, you're free to continue on to go talk to ICBC. But sure. now I've told you some key pointers. And I say to them, when the time comes, you may very well want to come back to me. Maybe three months from now, maybe if something starts to go wrong with the relationship with ICBC, and then I'll be here waiting for you. But at least they've been told the key things they need to know. And then, and then there often isn't a problem. Now, there's some cases where you would probably not want to go to ICBC uh, until you'd seen a lawyer for sure. And this is where cases where maybe, well, one could be, you're, you're get, it's been a long time since the accident, you didn't resolve it yet, you're getting close to a limitation, because as you know, we have an ultimate two-year limitation. Right. If you could break your neck, if you don't sue within two years and, and a day, your case is over. Or if there's an issue of liability for the accident, it's very important if there's an issue of who was at fault. You want to get a lawyer's help as soon as possible because witnesses can be identified, sure, of course. interviewed. Yeah. That's the crucial area I always tell people. If liability is an issue, it's even more important to talk to a lawyer as soon as you can. Joe, I think we need to repeat that. The, the, the limitations matter. I don't know how many of us in British Columbia are attuned to the fact that you can't wait indefinitely to report the circumstances of an accident, particularly if there's a lawsuit in the back of your mind. It has to be done within two years, correct? Sterling, yeah. For an adult injured after two years, if they haven't started a lawsuit, their claim is gone on it's finished um, if the claim is going to be against a municipality the municipality has to be given notice within six months something very very few people know okay and if they're not that could mean the claims finished there's a discretion the courts have um, if a child is injured the two years doesn't begin to run until the, the child turns 19 okay but there's ways that ICBC before the 19th birthday can trigger the running of the two years. So these are all good examples of why people should talk to a lawyer so that they have the knowledge and then can make a decision of what's best for them. Okay, we need to take a break here, but John, just before we go to the yes. break, you were talking about, as, as many of us would go to ICBC, and you said, you know, sometimes people just call you up, and Joe, you've told me this too, people just call you up going, hey, I've been in an accident, I'm gonna see ICBC, what should I know? Give me a tip or, or, or what sh give me, a, as you say, the lay of the land. And, and what, so what is it, what's the one thing you caution people about when they approach ICBC after having been in an accident and they call you first? Well, I would say I just point out to them the fact that the ICBC adjuster who is adjusting your case is often in a position where they're helping, supposedly helping both you as the injured person and helping the person who crashed into you, let's say, the okay. who rear-ended you. Right. And you can imagine they're wearing two hats. There's kind of a conflict of interest there. So I tell people it's important to remember that anything that they can potentially use that you might say or that they can gather from you that might help to diminish their exposure to risk for your injuries, they will gather. Right. And they will keep very close records of. And you may go in there sort of very open and ingenuous, just telling your story, not realizing that it's all being meticulously taken down. Mm -hmm. And you better make sure if they write a statement for you that you read it very carefully and make any corrections you want to make at that time on that statement. Because that statement will be there and it's going to pop up years later. And it's not the kind of thing you just want to casually just, okay, just sign off on it. And also, if there's any language barrier issues, you want to make sure you bring someone along with you who can help explain exactly what you're going to be signing. Interesting stuff. Well, we'll carry on. Uh, once, once we've determined that ICBC is going to necessarily be involved, and of course now in British Columbia, we do have some private insurance components to our auto packages. So interacting with the insurance company when it comes time to make a claim with our guests from Murphy Batista here on The Law Show will continue after this quick timeout. There's more of the show still ahead. This is The Law Show on CL 650.